Over the past few months, we've been transforming our out-of-date kitchen into a cozy cottage-style bathroom. From a DIY vanity and thrift flip projects to installing penny tile ourselves, we are ready to put the finishing touches on this space and tackle the largest furniture build I've ever done. Hello guys! Welcome back to the cottage and welcome back to the final episode, episode four, of making over our guest bathroom. If you've missed any of the episodes, I have an entire playlist that I put all the videos together for you. When we bought this house, this was an add-on and this is where they had their kitchen. It has come a long way from there. The kitchen was a little bit odd, a little bit run down, covering some windows, had not so desirable finishes in it and since we were relocating the kitchen which we are also working on so if you've missed any of those episodes i'll have those linked too we got our countertops which is why we had to wait several weeks before coming back into the guest bathroom and finishing it up because our diy vanity that used to be a phonograph cabinet now has granite we did the same granite that we did on the kitchen island also in the bathrooms on each of the vanities. And I'm absolutely in love. I picked the particular part piece of the granite that I wanted for this space. So in this episode, we are wrapping everything up, bringing the whole design and the vision that I have for this space to life. So without further ado, let's get started. This house did not have crown molding. And I just felt like it was such a missed opportunity. It had such heavy trim detail it just didn't have crown molding it just had quarter round up there so i did find one that i absolutely loved and i took your advice on going big or go home <laughs> we did seven inch crown molding so i was on a mission to find a seven inch in a profile that i really liked that kind of complemented the rest of the trim you guys look at this crown molding look at the profile it just has so much character i just felt like it went so well with what was original to the house since we've already painted this room i'm gonna make it easy on myself and i'm actually gonna paint this separately so we're gonna prime and paint these outside and then bring them in put them up and then we'll do some paint touch-ups Okay, so I got them all primed. And how this room is gonna be a little interesting because it's actually gonna be a combination of Tudor Brown and natural linen on the crown moldings. So I'm gonna do two boards in natural linen. And they say if you wanna glimpse the future, you say. And you said you put down your more We are gonna be doing a technique called coping. And I've never done it personally before. I know Kinsley. Wow. <laughs> never done it before. I've watched a lot of videos on it. But I think it's going to be the best way to get the prettiest joint when it turns a corner, you know, in in this room particularly because this ceiling is sloped. Coping is gonna help us not have to pay too much attention to that angle. I'm gonna cut the crown molding for this back wall the exact size at just 90 degree angles. We've got 83, exactly, 83. And we're gonna put that one up and we're gonna cope the other two to fit it. <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Okay, so we are about to attempt something called coping. Actually a really common technique for contractors when they are applying trim. Well, based on my research, what they found is that all walls are not perfect. They're not 90 degree angles. They're not always gonna be perfect. So with this technique, it gives you a lot more forgiveness in your trim. So that's what we're gonna try. I have this 
hoping saw. I've seen people do it with a jigsaw. That scares me. I'm not doing that. Um, so this is by hand. This is literally called a Pro Touch coping saw. I got it at the hardware store. I also got more blades because I have a tendency to break blades. So step one is actually to cut this board at an angle. So when the trim goes on the wall, it actually sits out like this. It's not straight, it's not flat on the wall. It sits out like crown molding. Um, so we need to figure out what that angle is and cut this at that angle. So all the tutorials that you'll watch online is like, do, 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 and it's coped and it's off and it's perfect. Ah, this takes me forever and I still have it. So watch, this, this is basically what you have to do. This is my bottom. We need to cut this bottom part straight. Cut that tip off. Video that I've watched, they actually do it a back cutting. So instead of going like this and cutting towards you, they actually cut this way. And we're gonna follow this profile edge here. So we just want this to be real, real skinny on the top and then go back 45 degrees. So we're getting somewhere. You see that this is cut off here and then this is still there. I know that this is like a prettier look and it's more finished, more polished. Why is it so much more work? Having flashes of having to do this to every corner in the house and that's like a lot. Hoping, 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 hoping it works. If not, we'll try again, but oh. I didn't cut the angle deep enough. Attempt 15 at coping. No. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'll be cutting enough of it off here maybe. Like these aren't enough. It's definitely not as easy as they make it look. Okay, uh, coping is not a skill that I am mastering quickly. I am taking a break from it. There's portions around the edges here on the walls and then also on the floor that I need to kind of like trim out. I think it's gonna make it a lot more, more finished, obviously. So there were two samples that I picked up from the hardware store that I was testing, kind of like corner trim. It has a divot in the end, so it's, it's a right angle. At first I was like, well, let's do plain. It just kind of covers the corners. I would rather something a little more decorative, especially on the floor part. So then I found this one with a little bit of profile. What if I use both? <laughs> and then this one will paint Tudor Brown. It would definitely be easier to paint this now, but I'm gonna have to do a lot of painting and I'm being a little impatient. matches the hardware almost I couldn't have gotten any closer with two different companies you know this and then there's two globes that go like this and I just love the ribbed texture it reminded me of the trend I'm gonna turn off the breaker so something that I would always mess up is that basically the wire has it's the copper and then there's the sleeve. So it's white and black, and then the ground is just copper. What I would mess up on is I would strip away too much of the sleeve part, and then it would cause them to touch when they were in, when I shoved all of the wires back inside, they would cause them to touch, and then I would trip the breaker. And I must have done that so many times before I realized you don't want anything exposed. You don't want them to be able to touch. So I started stripping away less of the sleeve <laughs> and it really, really worked in my face. Yes! <laughs> That's so exciting. See, I used to trip so many breakers, you guys. So now we can hang the mirror. Okay, that's exciting. So I have the, the globe and the mirror overlap just a tad, it's just what I planned for. Moving right along. It is a gloomy day here at the cottage and we are ready to build our DIY storage cabinet. I've always loved the look of an antique hutch, an antique piece of furniture in a bathroom which with rich wood, but hutches that are tall don't really come very deep. They're really just as deep to hold china 
you know, so like a plate that's laid down or something. Um, so it definitely wasn't gonna fill out the space that we have in this bathroom for storage, and it was gonna optimize the storage, you know? So I wanna build one that looks like an antique piece of furniture, or, you know, just has a reminiscent of it and build one myself. Found these wooden legs at the flea market for $10, and I wanna use those as the base, but even though this hutch is gonna be rather large, I'm actually gonna attach it to the wall as well. So after I finalized my design, I sat down and I figured out my cut list. I feel like this is crucial and this has been really helpful for me when doing any project is to actually figure out what pieces you need, what the measurements are before you start cutting. And then you can just be outside in 103 degree weather like me for a very short period of time. <laughs> Here is our cut list and we are gonna cut one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11 pieces of three quarter inch plywood that we already have. Okay, I got all the pieces cut. Then I just figured out which pieces actually get the pocket holes. We are gonna be putting the boxes together with pocket holes, just like we've done all of the cabinetry, all of, basically my preferred method of putting together furniture. So I've determined that the back and the sides need pocket holes, not the tops and the bottoms. And I feel like that goes for like the majority of stuff I build. So we have our center here. It's gonna go like that. And then two sides. It's like once you get furniture building in your head, it starts to come a little and a little and a little more natural. These are everything some wood glue here and then put our 90 degree angle clamp to hold it into place screw them in same thing on all three they're 90 degrees so now it's time for the back and when I did the measurements for the back um, I made sure to make the center shorter so that it would accommodate the back one. I tell you, your brain starts to think in furniture world. It's kind of cool. Glue. So if I put the legs on before I actually assemble the top, I can get in there. I feel like that might be a good plan. So I'm just gonna sand them down a little bit before um, I attach them so that it's easier on me later. And I was just able to screw Now it's time for the top. Okay, let's talk about supporting these legs. Um, so uh, uh, this is not gonna work. I just kind of put a screw in there so that it held the legs where I wanted them that I cut another piece of plywood two and a half inches because you see how on the leg right here there's like a flat part so I kind of measured okay where does it stop being flat right there and it's about two and a half inches so I cut a piece that was that width and I mitered them on the corner so that they fit flat I'm gonna snuggle this board right behind the legs and screw in a pocket hole screw. I'm hoping that this kind of gives it the first level support. Now that we have the top and the bottom made, I don't want adjustable shelves. I'm just gonna kind of go for it. Two pieces of wood in between. That'll give us one, two, three shelves. So that would be 18 inches. That's an 18 inch shelf. That's not bad. I think that it comes across on 
camera the true scale of this cabinet <laughs> that I'm attempting to build. It's huge. The structure that we put for the legs at the top, I did the same on the bottom, but I left the front off because I'd like to use it as storage. Now the time has come to attach to the wall. It's gonna be a lot of storage. Same screws, and I'm just gonna screw from the back of the drawers into those studs, and well, into those two by fours that we just put there. for the big boy to go on top. <gasps> Who the top? Whoa. Okay, so for our base frame. So I cut my sides first. I did these the same height as this board. So I'm not gonna go all the way down to this board here. I'm gonna go right on the edge. So the face frame is gonna come into the cabinet. And for the middle face frame, I actually built sideways H. <laughs> um, I built the top, the bottom, and the middle. I assembled it together because if you ever do this, you'll realize that there's really nothing for you to attach the middle piece to. So it kind of has to go and join to something else. So I attached it with, you guess it, pocket holes. Just two, make sure you always do two pocket holes, otherwise it'll just twist on you. So you always need at least two. Um, let's hope it actually fits. I measured like a million times. <laughs> and we have a face frame. So nothing is ever perfect, which is why I love trim. You know, it really helps to fix mistakes. <laughs> A little bit of space here and I don't like it I want it to look like it's attached so I looked outside to see what kind of trims I had and I had this one that I didn't use for a project I thought it was kind of pretty so I wanted to see what it would look like I like it better if it was more like that. this is about the time I wish you guys were here so you can actually like be like this way or that way I've always used face frames where plywood was showing and I was on TikTok and I saw this girl use real wood veneer edging and it's called Bandit. You can iron it on and it finishes the edges of plywood without having to add another piece of wood to cover it like a face frame. So we put all face frames here, which is great. But right here, you see how ugly this is? This is this not cute and finished and polished. Sand, smooth, and finish as desired. It really does feel like wood. It's kind of wild. Here goes nothing. Wow, it's actually sticky. What? We'll do a little roll action. So if you ever need a clean edge on a piece of plywood, buy this stuff, band it. Also I'm thinking about this now is, wonder how stuck this is gonna be. Now it doesn't get super steamy in here because it's not a, a shower in here, but this is a bathroom. I'll let you know how this holds up. I, I'm not sure. If it seems to be coming off, I can always put a real face frame. Like, that's not a problem. Thought a lot about what color I wanted this cabinet to be. My gut was telling me to go with something that was more tone on tone. So we're gonna stain it the same color as the vanity. That is espresso. And this is a water-based poly and stain. So it's not gonna be super stinky in here, but I'm still, I'm still gonna open the windows. We're using a water-based pre-stain.
that took forever, but I'm done. This cabinet is huge, you guys. It's, it's deceiving how big it actually is. Okay, it is time to do the drawers and the doors. <laughs> so, I'm gonna start with the drawers. Drawers, I've done a couple of times. They're fairly simple when you wrap your head around them. And what you'll need is obviously wood for your sides, your front and your bottom, and also drawer slides. Now this is a pack, this is one pack, and you can buy them at different lengths. These particular ones are soft clothes, so it kind of has this little spring action. And also they come with these somewhat, of, I'm calling them spacers. They are to use if you have a face frame. What the pack will also come with is this little kind of like paper instruction. And it'll tell you what to do. So I started with this section here. It's like the pre-installation. I need a half an inch space on each side for the drawer slides. So I'm gonna take the measurement of the opening and I'm gonna subtract a half an inch on each side. So I'm gonna tra subtract an inch. And that is gonna be the width of our drawer. 22 inches is the depth of our slide. So I'm gonna make the drawer 22 inches, the box itself. Then we'll have the face of the drawer in addition to that measurement. Also, you have to determine how tall you want your drawer to be. Um, I chose to make mine about six inches. I just felt like that was a solid kind of opening. So to make a drawer, you're gonna need six pieces. You're gonna need a front and a back and two sides. The front and the back is the ones that are gonna get the pocket holes. Cause once we put the face of the cabinet on, it's gonna cover the front pocket holes and then the back pocket holes are never gonna be seen because they're gonna be in the back of the cabinet. So it makes it look super finished. Put these together, we're obviously gonna use my 90 degree angle clamps, just like we've been doing all the rest of these projects. I feel like they're all the same. They're all boxes, essentially. When your sides, your front and your back are together, you'll have a box, literally. For the bottom of the drawer, I'm gonna be using quarter inch plywood, so it's gonna be super simple to install. And of course, you're gonna need the face of your drawer, which is the exact size of your opening, minus about an eighth of an inch all the way around. Okay, a box, a drawer box. There's one and two. Okay, let's center it up. If we did this right, half inch. We did good. Okay. Okay, so now we're attaching the slide to the side, but we need to figure out where that goes. So I want my face of the drawer to actually fit inside the cabinet. So the instruction paper said to position the slide only like a 16th of an inch from the edge. But since I want my drawer front to sit inside, I'm gonna go three quarters of an inch, which is the thickness of my front, plus a 16th. I don't know what that number is, but you know, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna go three quarters of an inch up just to kind of get it off the bottom and um, still maximize the storage, but just have it a little bit higher. This is usually about the time that I realize I messed up. <laughs> something. Drawers are kind of hard. Let's see. Oh. Oh, see? Oh no. Oh, it is soft clothes watch. I cut the boards for the front of the drawers and I'm putting them on here. I've been thinking about them, like how, how do I know exactly where they're supposed to go and stuff. So I have some wood shims that are, you know, kind of triangular shape here. I'm going to shim it on the bottom. So it's the even, you know, spacing all the way around. Just recently went to an estate sale and found the most beautiful hardware for like less than 19 cents a piece which is insane. It was a whole bunch of different ones that we're gonna be using for the kitchen. But I thought that these looked really pretty and they looked most like the vanity. So I was thinking we could use these with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill the hole for the handle so that it keeps the drawer front in place. Then I'm gonna secure the drawer front from the back inside the drawer. I hope that works. Maybe that's how they do it. I don't know, I can't think of another way to do it.
craving decorating. I'm like, I've been working on wood projects. I've been doing this. I've done all of this dirty work. Like I've got stain underneath my fingernails that I've been trying to get out. I'm ready to decorate. But our cabinet isn't 100% finished, or maybe it is. I really wanna ask your opinion. So I have two more ideas for this cabinet. It's coming along beautifully, and it's very beautiful like, like it is. And I added a little bit of trim to the drawers to make it a little more like antique-y. Um, so two things, I had designed doors to go onto the cabinet so it would be glass doors, because that was really what I loved about antique cabinets being in the bathroom was the glass doors. So I'm still thinking that those are a yes. Second thing is I want your opinion. This little topper was the top to the vanity from the primary bathroom that we replaced for granite. And this is the topper. I thought that this might be really pretty or something like this would be really pretty on the top of this cabinet. It would further the, this is an antique cut shirt. This is, you know, it would further the look that I was going for. And then I hesitated using this exact one because this one goes to that topper that we could turn into a cabinet. Let me know what you think about this idea of putting this kind of decorative topper up there. If you really like it as much as I'm kind of leaning towards it, we can find one at like the flea market, like some kind of decorative topper to go up there. Because if I use this one, I would have to cut it down. So I got a little nervous. So if we were to put the topper up there it would be something like that it'd be pretty so obviously been collecting really amazing pieces of art for all the rooms in the house um, but specifically there were just some pieces that kind of called to me and was like this would be perfect in the bathroom one my mom gave me these two for my birthday they are beautiful they are vintage they're actually originally from sears oh date but you can see the sticker how old the sticker is and it was when sears sold things for three dollars and 99 cents and it's got this very unusual green kind of velvet color and they're just really pretty so when i was kind of playing with them in the space i thought that they would be really pretty here those look i've been dreaming about putting those pictures there for so long i love the reflection behind the mirror that you can see them so pretty okay so i have a few more you know my obsession with birds i have a big obsession with birds. <laughs> these are new but i cannot find them for the life of me anywhere online i have google lens them i have image searched them i have searched keywords i've searched the the numbers on the back of them here they are if anyone wants to look up let me know if you can find them. There are a set of three and they're three different birds. So pretty, I loved the frames. I don't really want three together. Like I thought about, oh, we could put them like one, two, three, but it's really skinny and narrow and tall. So I went back in my shed to see if I had anything like horizontal because I was like, oh, we could put one here and then something else going horizontal. I found this one. So what do you guys think about that? I love the look of it being heavy on top. I just thought these were different enough, but complementing still in the right ways. So this bird had more of the green that picked up in the meadow in that one. So I swapped it for that one because this one was more olive. So we'll put this one on the other side because I'm going to decorate this storage cabinet too. Another thing that you got to have in a bathroom is kind of like a hand towel holder. This one I thrifted. <sighs> sometime in LA, it was at the house in LA. And I was thinking about where to put it. Initially wanted it here, which I still want it there, even though I know that it's close to the toilet and you know, like just flushing the toilet, spraying from the toilet, that's not really like that. This is not the best place for it. But then I was like, okay, well, where else do you put it? But like the towel, you can't put it here. The towel is gonna hit the thing. And then over here, we have all the switches and then you're like drying your hands over an outlet, which isn't very smart. You can't put it below it. What do you do with it? So I feel like you guys aren't gonna like this, but I think I'm gonna put it here. And it kind of like balances that this is kind of off center. Another thing that I got that is so awesome <laughs> is this toilet paper holder. I got this at a flea market in Amsterdam. That's even wild to say. It was 10 euros. I like that it was brass and like wood tone. I felt like it was perfect. This is the old hole for the electrical for this phonograph or something. My plan was to cover it. 
Just put it right here in the center. Amazing! So my mom and I were driving to Houston and we passed by a thrift store and there was these two boards with hooks on them. I didn't like it on the board, but I loved the hooks. The board with three hooks for $5 and then I broke one trying to get it off the <laughs> board. So two hooks for $5, this is how I'm looking at it. And because the tub that we got for this guest bathroom is vintage, it's flat on one side. So it had to be pushed all the way to a wall so that it could fill with water and drain properly. It, since it's pushed more to the left, there's kind of a void on this side of the area. So since I love when things are hung on tile, I was thinking that we could hang some hooks. Obviously this is where we could hang our towels out of the bath and before we get in because it's so accessible to the Quaffa tub. Our whole house doesn't have window treatments yet, but we desperately need them in the bathroom. <laughs> We're feeling a little bit exposed. So when I thought about the design in this space, I really wanted to have cafe style curtains, which is a rod in the middle of the window and the bottom half of the window having curtains. So it offers privacy, but it still has a lot of sunlight that comes in. And I feel like that's really common in Victorian homes and older homes around this, this kind of like time frame when it was built. So I really wanted vintage fabric. I went to a thrift store locally here and I found a comforter and and it was in it all bagged up with lots of other fabric and I pulled it down and I pulled it out and it were these beautiful peacocks with really pretty colors and that's exactly what I was looking for but it was almost too good to be true. I was like, there's no way. So it was originally marked $75. It was marked down to $20 because I guess it didn't sell and then all the linens that day were 50% off. So it was 10 bucks for this big bag of fabric. Spent all night at my mom's house ripping out the seams taking out the batting on the inside, removing all the thread and stuff and, and getting it ready to be fabric. So we are gonna make cafe curtains out of this and I really hope that they turn out. Since this fabric was a little bit on the sheerer side, I got also this kind of oatmeal color. Bed Bath & Beyond had these decorative round spring tension rods. I've used spring tension rods before. They're a great winter friendly option too if you wanted curtains but you, didn't, you couldn't put holes in your walls. This color, and I thought, yes, that's exactly what I want. And I also got these curtain rod rings. They had like a natural kind of gold color to them. So I put the rod in the window and I measured exactly how far from the rod after the rings were on to the bottom. So that gave me how tall I needed my curtains. Then I measured the width of the window. Since I'm gonna be doing two panels per window, I'm gonna make each panel the width of the window. They look nice and like billowy and kind of like ruffled. So I cut my peacock fabric exactly the size that I need it. And I also cut a piece of the oatmeal liner for the inside, the same measurement minus an eighth of an inch all the way around. You kind of want your liner to be a little bit smaller just so that it doesn't flip over to the front and you can see it. So it just kind of stays in the back. So first I'm gonna lay the pretty fabric down. Pretty side is faced up. Then I'm gonna lay the oatmeal right on top with its pretty side facing the peacock. So basically we want pretty sides facing each other so that we can sew them together along the side seams. I'm gonna pin the two fabrics together just so they don't slide around when I'm sewing them. You'll kind of have to pull the liner to the edge because it's gonna be a little smaller. I'm gonna sew the two pieces of fabric together with a half an inch seam allowance. So half an inch in from the edge. Now that we have the sides sewed together, turn it inside out and ironing is your friend. All through fashion school, God, we ironed everything. The seams, it helps to get a cleaner seam. It helps to have your seam allowance already pressed down so you don't have to guess at it. Turn it inside out and lay it down. And I'm gonna press the seams open. Then it's going to lay a lot flatter. It's just gonna look a lot more polished. Then once they're pressed open, press the seam down flat like this, right on the edge of the front and the lining. This is where ironing comes in really, really helpful is actually pressing down the seams before you sew them. So I'm gonna turn it up and press down a half inch first. Then I'm gonna turn it up again, fold it over again, and do an inch and a half. And that's our two inches that I added. You can actually add more hem if you, if you want. Then I'm gonna line up this edge with the side of the foot on the sewing machine. This is gonna put the stitch down about a quarter of an inch from the top of the hem.
That pattern is so unlike me, but I'm kind of into it. So let me know what you guys think. I think it brings a little bit of color and something different to the space. You guys have so many fun things for the storage cabinet. At Target, all of their storage bins were like 25% off. And these were already pretty inexpensive, I think. Black wire ones, because I didn't want them to show up too much, but I thought these would be great for like toilet paper and mm, extra washcloths. What else do you put in these things? I thought they were so nice. I think they were only like $5, so that's a great buy. And then obviously also what we need to put in here is our towels. As we live here, I feel like the storage is going to become more and more useful. But as of now, we just don't have tons. I just have like makeup and skincare products that I want to organize into the drawer. I have the other two bird pictures that I think will be so pretty in here. I'm kind of resting them back in the back here and then one up top. And then we have like a lot of useful little things, little glass canisters for cotton balls and Q-tips that I can fill. I actually thrifted both of these and then a whole bunch of pretty vintage glassware that I got on Etsy. I love to group things in trays or baskets. I feel like it adds like a togetherness to things. It doesn't look as messy when you want to put a lot of the small things together. But I got this one at Target when I got these and I felt like it was 25% off too. Nice, like here. And then we can kind of group all of these things together, like this almond, this almond spray, so good. I love anything that smells like almond. Some of my hair products can go in here. Some soaps for guests. So up here, we could do another picture. And then I just have some pretty decorative things. Look how pretty this is. I got this for half off of $15. It's the same kind of green color that's in the pieces of art over here, so I thought it would bring in some color. This is pretty. I'm just gonna leave the bowl on this side. And then we can put some of our pretty glassware. Hanging the towels there actually really helped kind of balance and fill out that area. But it needs one more thing. A stool. Something extra to put something down on, like, I don't know, a glass of water or some bath salts or something that you need on the side. Stools are hard to come by. So when you find them and you find them at a good price, buy them. This was $20 and this is perfect. Perfect for the side of a bathtub. So by putting this here, you see how it kind of fills that space out right there? You can put anything on it. I'm gonna put flowers because I like flowers, especially <laughs> hydrangeas. <laughs> how sweet bathing by the flowers but no vintage tub is complete without a bath caddy and I found this one and now I did pay up for this one this one's new this one's from anthropology but when you see bath caddies sometimes the metal on them the wiring is like really like thin and it looks cheap and this one's hefty so it was, it was worth the price and it was beautiful look how pretty all the details are and they, the sides expand to fit your tub i also put little pads on the bottom so it wouldn't scratch the tub some bubble bath these are also some of the pieces that came in that kind of vintage set that i found this one was my favorite find look it's vintage And finally, a rug. We've loved this rug. We've actually been using it for a while in here while we waited for our countertops. It's a ruggable rug, so we can wash it, which is great for the bathroom. I have yet to wash it myself, um, but I will keep you guys posted on how it holds up.
I hope you guys enjoyed transforming our out-of-date kitchen into a cozy guest bathroom over the last few months. I feel like I've been working on this project for quite a while because bathrooms and kitchens both have a lot that goes into them. And we're still not done because there are still some things that I need to master, like coping, so don't look up. Don't look at, let's not look at, let's not talk about the crown molding. I'm gonna keep practicing. I wanna get really good at it so that I don't waste any of our beautiful crown molding and it looks really, really good. Also, I can't wait to see what you guys think about this cabinet. Doors, yes or no? Maybe finding a topper to go up at the top. So let me know what your thoughts are. I also wanna get some like really pretty bins, now, linen for like laundry underneath. I feel like that's a great way to utilize the space underneath. We're gonna be organizing all of the drawers with my skincare. So definitely come back for the rest of our renovation as we move back into the kitchen. And of course, I'll give you updates in the space as well, probably over on the vlog channel. So if you don't already follow me on my other channel, Exo McKenna Vlogs, I will leave it linked for you. This has been quite a long video. So if you have made it this far, thank you. I appreciate you more than words can ever express. Thank you for being on this journey with me. We have so many other projects to work on. We have so many more renovations that we need to do to bring this cottage back to life. So I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.